This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, here we go. We got a walk-in cooler. It's not working. Let's go see what we got going on. Is this the cooler that's not working right? I couldn't tell you honestly. Yeah, they ain't kind of dirty. Right back. Look through the next door. So I thought this was the freezer. You'll see the fans right at the top. Gotcha. Straight ahead. Well, you can see how bad the other one looks. This one here. I can hear it running, but we have no fans. Yeah, it's cleaner than the other one. Coming through at 100 mile an hour. These are those Bone Miser TXVs that I had to deal with not too long ago. That uh, didn't make sense. So, don't know if this was originally a freezer and maybe that's why the fan's not running, that it's getting power from the pump on the roof. Trying to maneuver around all this stuff in the way. Hey. Norcal Dave's beer of the day. Now this is a beer cooler. As you can tell, it's a beer cooler, which means we usually run a freezer style unit in here and means it'll have heated defrost, which really makes it easy to get to. So let's get in here and see if by chance, it's probably not getting cold enough. It's probably what's going on. And the temperature switch is not hitting to bring the fans on, as far as the fan delay. Let's see if we can get up here. Do we have a fan delay on this thing? All right, so here's your defrost, defrost termination switch right there. So it's gonna have one. Okay, I did not see a defrost termination switch on the other side. But there's that big bone miser honker donker there, medium temp. TXV, which like I said, is not running very cold. I remember this being a little low. Wouldn't be surprised if that's not leaking because believe it or not, that little bulb right there is literally in the suction line and is um, can leak around that thing because it's just got a rubber seal around it that's squeezed just like a uh, side glass on a boiler would be. All right, so I did not look very closely. There is a fan time delay termination switch right there. So your power comes in on four. In is always the other side of power. So if you was to go to in, which is right here, and go to four, you should have power, which we've got power on four. Okay, let's see if I can make this easy enough. We got power coming in on in, into the switch, and out of it coming back over to F1. The other side of F2 goes to four. So four has one side of power, the other power comes out of the black lead. So if we use a jump black, which is in to F1, it should run, which we already checked it with the meter. So I'll go to F1, which is right here and go to in, which is right there. Look at that. There's your fans. So yeah, our problem is the switch is not cold enough and that's why it's not wanting to run. So that also explains why the TXVs are so noisy because we're low on refrigerant, just about guarantee it. So let's just go outside and do that real quick because we'll probably have to look for a leak in here. All right, what we're gonna do is grab the leak detector. We might as well go in there and check for leaks before we get the fan running. That way it isn't blowing the stuff all over the place. So we're gonna get out the world's greatest leak detector. So we got the old DTX Stratus warming up. All right, so warmed up ahead of time. Not good. Already going off before you even get there. 
saying if they've got so many things in this building that leaks, it wouldn't be a real surprise. Okay, let's just go ahead and get up in here for all those elbow joints are. Go over here on this other side where the TXV is. Checking around the suction on the TXV. We already scanned all this and stuck it in to the fan area there, which you can't do with an H10. Uh, getting those nice tight spots. So I've got nothing, not granted it's running, so the suction pressure is gonna be in the 40s probably depending on what refrigerant we got. Let's go outside and get this thing charged up and get it running. Okay, obviously that's right there. Coming out of the very back one, so it's gonna be this first one. I think the one I worked on the last time was the one back here at the back. So we're gonna go ahead and focus on this one right here. Let's get it opened up so we can see what we're doing. Yeah, I remember there being a lot of oil in here and not knowing where it came from and not sure if it was like from another compressor change or something, but it's an 05 compressor. So this thing's been in at least 17 years, 18 years. So it's just like a brand new spring chicken. Let's go to our front sight glass here. I think we're gonna see what's obvious. Yeah, we're looking pretty low, pretty low. Well, they put the disconnect box down there where it's real convenient. Let's scan it over real quick. That way if we need to make a fix, we can do it before we have to pull it back out. Worst case scenario with it being, that's 220. We could always come back or whatever. See if that one controls the back one. That'd be illogical. Yep, it looks like that's the one. It's slowing down. Lucky here, nailed it in a couple seconds. Right there. Never fails on that discharge valve. They always leak. That would explain why there's been crap everywhere all over. Go ahead and scan the rest of it. But I've had that leak multiple times. Never gets tightened up usually at install and they get left loose from the factory. I like scanning the backside of the condenser coil. It's usually cleaner and it's got that shroud around it to help keep the wind out, which helps out. Okay, but right there seems to be the main one. Let's uh, grab some soapy joke. Get some solid stream on there if possible. Let's see if it's leaking on the threads. Hopefully that way we can just tighten it up and not have to cut it out. That's it. Now we should be able to tighten that up and not have to deal with it. Wow. Loosen that up and then look at how bad that's leaking. Yeah, somebody's toasted that. Oh wow, it's going nuts up here. That's gay girl. She's going nuts. Look at that. It's leaking out of the bottom even. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at them cookies. Chocolate milk and cookies for everybody. Heck yes. Goob that full of freaking pipe dope or something, you know. Or chop it out. I prefer not to have to chop it out. Let's uh, grab some nylog, goop in it. Maybe get the wire brush out here. See if we can get away with not having to go berserko. You can see some like rust color. Yeah, she's going nuts. She don't like that. Probably not the right cap. 
go. Cleaned up that side. Somebody probably cranked down on it way too tight. It has a little red raised edge that generally uh, just needs slightly tightened, like a eighth of a turn, and usually it'll be fine, but unfortunately, somebody Donkey Konged it and got her done. Let's grab a little bit of the, my favorite Nylog. It gets a little messy. I think that's silly. It's messy. It, I don't want to get messy. I don't want to get messy. Get a little stuff on my hands. Put a little bit in here on the threads. That part there, shit sh sh dizzles and diggles. Put that right like that. There we go. Let's see if that did it. Not seeing anything. Now, granted, it's not running either with 250 plus pounds of pressure on it. I think I would feel a little better if we added a little bit of Teflon tape to it, maybe. Get in there. Wrap it the right direction. I hate getting rid of it because you can actually isolate the compressor if you need to. And I prefer not to. Plus, time factor. I gotta go to another one of their locations and fix another one. Not leaking. Okay, we'll leave a note up here. Discharge valve leaks. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'll do 413. There we go. I left him a little note. That's sealed. I'm not picking up the detector or that. We'll do it when it's running with high pressure on it, but it's no different than a screw in um, pressure relief valve for a liquid receiver tank. Uh, we usually use pipe dope of some sort, usually like a uh, lock tight brand uh, white stuff. I forget the 700 number or whatever. It works. Either way, let's go grab some go-go juice. This should be 404. Let's see, yeah, it's PoE, so it's gonna be 404. And uh, get this thing dropping in temp. Sure, I've said things about this before. That wireless scale, which is really sweet, just like all the Testo stuff. Do it right here on the display. You don't have to get out your phone if you don't want to. It has that option, but you don't need to. Then we're going to refrigerant charge. I'm going to go manual. I do have the um, auto capabilities on the solenoid, which is out in the um, carrying case for this, but I just don't use it very often. But if you were doing a bunch of startups, things like that, it definitely would be useful for that if you wanted to walk away and try to be as productive as possible. Let's go ahead and kick this back on. I already rotated my clock so that we aren't going back into a defrost anytime soon. And uh, it just so happened to be perfectly at the three o'clock mark. All right, luckily we're at 34 pounds suction, so that means we didn't pull anything in. The pressure switch would have shut it down so we don't have to mess with anything far as uh, dryers or anything like that. We'll go ahead and get this thing added to it. don't sound the greatest in the world. Yeah, not the greatest in the world, that's for sure. We're just now at one pound. Still green. Looks like, you know, otherwise everything looks fairly okay. You'll spray that thing, see if it's bubbling. Detector's not gonna do real great with that wind blowing like that. I don't care what detector you got on that. And we do have a accumulator here on the uh, suction side of the compressor, so we're not gonna be slamming it with liquid too bad. I mean, obviously we got a charge of liquid and we're kind of moving along fairly quickly. For the most part, that nylon's gonna fit in between the brass cap and the brass threads there at the top, and it's gonna seal when it squeezes down on it. It um, like I said, if we get chopped it out, then you have to fill, change the filter dryer, pull a vacuum, a lot of extra time. As you can tell, uh, generally they uh, don't want to spend any more than they need to on it. They just want to keep the cost down and keep it moving along. 
getting there. We're getting there. She's a coming, baby. She's a coming. There you go. Now that'll fluctuate a little bit more. We're right there at 4.6 pounds. Pressure's dropping a little bit. She'll settle down. Probably could use a wash and all for sure. You can see the TXV starting to pull back a little bit. I've, I've not dumped any in for probably about two, three minutes. So all that frost back is slowly disappearing from the TXV adjusting. Run about eight degrees, 244 head. So as soon as that starts to slow down a little bit, that'll also fill up our side glass. So that'll back it up a little bit. Not seeing anything leaking on it. I know that's not the greatest way of doing it, but if you know your customer, you know what they would rather have. And I know they would rather have cheaper if it works. Looks don't matter, operation does. There's other ones where absolutely take your time, chop it out. It just really depends on the customer. Went around, sprayed all of our other little fittings here. Just now that we've got more pressure built up on it. All of our fittings out here, everything looks good. Solenoid valve's good. 267 on the head, she's rising a little bit. Let me take a look here in this coil. This looks a little jackeried. Actually ain't too bad. Okay, well, we're running that head pressure there of about 265 area. It's a little warmer today. I think we're going to get up to 80, which is really surprising for mid-April for us. I'm not picking up any speed ups or anything, so I think we're good on that. Looking good. Not flooding back no more. Not bad. All right, let's go back in here and make sure that it's dropping in temperature and the fans are on. Yeah, just like that right there needs, needs cleaned up. Oh, look at that, fans are on. Looks a little better. You can see it through there. Yep, working good. Not too horribly dirty, it's a little bit of gunk on it. Nowhere near what the other one is. Let's check the thermostat, see where it's at. Think about 32-ish. Yeah, about 30, 32-ish. All right, we do got some glass stuff and water in here. You don't get too stupid with it. This is where all the kegs and stuff are at, so they're gonna run it colder. They have it all on tap. And then it all goes to the, to the front. Plus I got meat and stuff in here too, so. Yep, and look at that. Right there's the thermometer running about 38, 36. All right, guys, it's gonna wrap this one up. I did check with them about washing out the coil. They usually do their own maintenance on their coils and their HVAC stuff. We usually just take care of the refrigeration and if they can't get the other stuff working, then they call us for that. So simple stuff like maintenance things, they have their own maintenance department for that. I forgot about that. Uh, so they're gonna do that here in the next month or so, washing out coils and things. Um, like I said, the only reason why the fans didn't come on is because the defrost termination switch that's used typically in a freezer is what they're using in this cooler because they do run it at colder temperatures. That's why it has defrost heaters on it because they want to run it just at or below 30. That's the reason why we run that type of evaporator uh, with the cooler is just so we can run those lower temperatures. Everything else looked pretty good for the age of it. Like I said, it's 2005 and uh, I'm sure we'll be back for plenty of other things that we work on. Guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. If you would, consider subscribing. Check me out on Instagram. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.